Hello! In this Fargo tutorial, we show you how to communicate and route statically with a PFC across different subnets. Here is an example of a network topology typical for a manufacturing company. There are three different subnets. Subnet LAN 1 is the network of one or more machines. In addition to the PFC, there is also an Internet router, for example with a UMTS connection for remote maintenance purposes to enable external service companies to access the machine controls. Subnet LAN 2 is the production hall network. This is used by the company's own service engineers to monitor the machines. Subnet LAN 3 is the office network, from which employees need to access the control systems, for example to read out batch numbers directly. We will start with a PFC connected to Ethernet interface X1 on subnet 192.168.1.0 that is subnet LAN 1, the machine network. To do this, we need to assign the PFC an IP address on the LAN 1 subnet. There are several ways to do this. We will do it here using the Vago USB service cable and Ethernet settings. In the Vago tool Ethernet settings, we now assign the static IP address 192.168.117 with the subnet mask 255.255.255.0. Write the settings to the controller. The controller is now on the LAN 1 subnet and can communicate with all other devices on this subnet. To enable remote maintenance, we need a router to act as a gateway from the LAN 1 subnet. The Internet router does this job and handles requests from the Internet. It will then be our default gateway and handle all packets that have an IP address outside of LAN 1. In our example here, the router has an IP address of 192.168.1.1, so we enter this as the default gateway address. The default gateway address is usually the first host address on the subnet. We write the settings into the controller, so that remote maintenance is now possible. Going back to our topology diagram, the LAN2 subnet is connected to the second Ethernet interface on the PFC, with a network address 192.168.2.0. To access the PFC from this subnet, we need to set up the second network interface on the PFC. When the PFC is delivered, the two network interfaces are switched and work on the same subnet. To operate another subnet on X2, the interfaces must be separated. We can do this in the web-based management, under Configuration and Ethernet Configuration. We connect X2 to Bridge2 and confirm with Submit. The interfaces are now separated and we assign a static IP address for Bridge2 under TCP IP configuration 192.168.2.17 and the subnet mask and confirm with submit. The PFC is now also connected to the LAN2 subnet and can be reached from there using the IP address 192.168.2.17. Do not specify a default gateway here as requests from outside of the two subnets, for example for remote maintenance, should still be routed through the Internet router 192.168.1.1. If a default gateway were specified here, only one of the two would be used, either the one with a lower gateway metric or the one that happens to be first in the routing table. The option to specify another default gateway here is more of a redundancy option to provide an alternate route in the event of losing connectivity. In the routing menu, there is also a function called IP forwarding through multiple interfaces, which allows routing between the two subnets. This is disabled on delivery and we leave it inactive for now. This allows service companies, for example, to lock onto the PFC via the Internet for remote maintenance but they do not have access to the LAN2 subnet connected to X2 and the networks are securely separated. When checked, the PFC acts as a router and connects the two subnets. To test the connection of the LAN2 subnet, we assign our PC an IP address in LAN2. Connect the PC to X2. 
and dial into the controller's web-based management, but now with a LAN 2 IP address 192.168.2.17. And we are connected. To access the PFC from the LAN 3 network, we first assign the PC an IP address on LAN 3 192.168.3.10. As the PFC is now in a different subnet, we need to specify a default gateway that will take care of distribution outside the subnet. This is the router that connects LAN 2 and LAN 3 and has the IP address 192.168.3.1 on the LAN 3 side. Now we should be able to reach the PFC via the router. But when we ping it, we get no response and the PFC appears to be unreachable. Strictly speaking, the PFC is accessible, but the response is sent to the wrong gateway. To illustrate the problem, we have here a small packet, that is for example a request to the web-based management of the PFC. We address the packet with the IP address of the PFC. The sender is automatically appended and the packet is sent on its way. The router connected LAN 3 and LAN 2 will of course know the IP address of the PFC and will easily forward the packet to the PFC. The PFC processes the request and sends the response to the default gateway because the sender address is not one of its subnets. So we need to show the PFC a different route. We define an exception so that it does not send requests from LAN 3 to the default gateway but to the router that connects LAN 2 and LAN 3. So we give our PC an IP address on LAN 1 and log onto the PFC's web-based management. In the configuration tab, under networking, we find the routing menu. Here we can create a static route, here called custom route. First we activate the service. Then we enter a destination address. In our case, we want to answer requests from the whole of LAN 3. So we enter the network address 192.168.3.0 with the destination mask 255.255.255.0. If only one host is to be shared, an IP address including the host address can also be entered here. But then the subnet mask must be set so that the address is read out to the last digit, for example 255.255.255.255. .255 .255. Our gateway to LAN 3 is the router between LAN 2 and LAN 3, which has the address 192.168.2.1 on the LAN 2 side, which we use as the gateway address. The gateway metric value is rather uninteresting in this case. It can be used to prioritize different gateways. We confirm with that. Give the PC an IP address in LAN 3 with the router as a default gateway log into the web-based management of the PFC with the IP address 192.168.2.17. The PFC now responds via the correct gateway and we are successfully connected. If we do not receive a response, it may be because all the default gateways with a higher priority are active on the PC, for example via the Wi-Fi interface.